Capturing life's essential ingredients, one story at a time. We speak, or more so listen, to all types of people, hoping to inform, inspire, and transform lives. Open to build community, one community at a time. This is Life's Essential Ingredients with Jeff and the mic. Wow. Is that what we're talking about? You're going to give me the wow right out of the gate? <laughs> very soothing. You well, have that my voice, wife, though. and you know my wife very well, but uh, she yeah. told me for a long time that I have uh, a face for radio. <laughs> now you're telling me that uh, the voice is soothing. So hopefully that's a good thing. That is good. Yeah. All right. So poke some holes in it right out of the gate, because that's just our first one. And uh, that is definitely one of the things I'm going to want your help with. Um, but we'll get into that uh, shortly. Let me introduce you uh, to my Pasho, because the introduction says Jeff with a mic. And sometimes people think that it's just a microphone, but he's the real <laughs> deal. Holy field. My right. good friend, my Pasho, Mike Sestich. Uh, this is Wayne Shepard, Wayney Wayne, uh, a Sacramento legend uh, on the radio uh, at UC Davis, at Sac City, uh, all over the community. And Wayne, we are just so excited. I'm going to let you guys say hello to each other and get into the show. How you doing, Wayne. Mike? Good, good, Wayne. Nice to meet you, man. Thank you for coming on. This is going to be fun. Can't wait. Oh, yeah. yeah, no doubt. Love it. All right. So now, since you have all these years experience, uh, of being on the radio and uh, the, the number one personality uh, in Northern California uh, yeah. at that time, uh, poke some holes in the intro, man, just for real. You know how we always do it. <laughs> well, I don't, it's not, it's, it's okay. It's, I mean, it's, it's a little bit too soothing actually. You know what I mean? I know you you were talking about life's essentials and ingredients and stuff like that, but I think you need like a cool, because you're like a cool jazzy type cat. So I think you need a cool jazzy background, first of all, musically, and then 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 you do what you do with your with your voice. You know what I mean? You gotta because when it comes to to, to music, you kind of gotta feel the music. So mm -hmm. if I if I get you a jazz background to uh to to do your thing over, I think it'll sound a lot better and different. I think it I think you'll really be able to just delve into it and, and give it give it a little bit more because you can do that. Yeah, love it. I love it. And uh, so if I heard you correctly, uh, you were going to help me figure that out. Uh, well, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You know, I'm a, I'm a music producer, so I can get you something, something nice. And, I love and it. Yeah, I got you. That is not why I wanted you on the show, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> the reason uh, of many is I'm looking at it, man. Just your smile uh, from day one uh, has always just uh, made my heart feel so good. And yeah, man, I appreciate that. in these times, we, we just need that. Yeah, man. Yeah, no doubt. Um, we're going through some trying times right now. And and it's tough because a lot of people are having hard times just um, coping and spending time with themselves or with their family members. And and, it's, and to me, it's kind of sad because, I mean, um, before we got really social in life, we started off alone and with our family. And now, you know, we're back to that square one because of COVID and people cannot adapt and cope with that. And, you know, they're becoming suicidal and depressed. And, and I mean, if you can't spend time with yourself or with your family and for a matter of not even what, what, seven, eight months without going, going, I don't want to use the word crazy, but without losing your mind, I think that, that there's a problem with that. And I think that people need to do some self-searching in my opinion. Definitely, definitely. And that's a, a, a big intent of this show. And I know you are a deep guy that loves to have fun and, and loves to think. And the, the title of the show can be a little bit confusing, Life's Essential Ingredients. And that is such a broad topic. And yes. Mike and I are still trying to figure out where are we going and who is our, our target audience. And I think we'll figure it out as the show progresses um, but right now it's kind of families, it's everyday people, you know, it's young men like yourself, just doing great things that wear 10 different hats, uh, help all kinds of people. Uh, it's going to be coaches, CEOs, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, uh, everybody who is searching for their life's essential ingredients. And I guess, you know, when we get back to, and we'll come full circle on this, but you're talking about it's how it's hard for people to sit and just listen and kind of be and I think 
hopefully that's what our show will be able to do is help people get into that space, slow life down and figure out what is truly essential. And I yeah. do, uh, I am an optimist and I do believe that these challenges that our country is facing, uh, we are going to come out stronger for it for sure. Uh, and we're going to figure it out. And, and I think at the end of it, we're, we're going to come together uh, as one people. Um, and, and that starts with each of us uh, figuring out who we are. Um, and, and this show starts with a thought of the day. And I was trying to think, man, you know, you, you do mean a lot to me. And I know we don't get to spend a lot of time together, but any time that we are together, uh, you just make me feel so good. And then your laugh is just incredible. And, and, and we might shed some tears on this one. Definitely going to have a lot of laughs. Um, but there's one great quote. And then another one that I kind of uh, took on and, and tweet. And, and the first one comes from the great Dr. Maya Angelou. And, and she says, my great hope is to laugh as much as I cry to get my work done to try to love somebody and have the courage to accept that love in return. Hey Amen. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes. I that's, feel the same. That, that's you. You know, I, awesome. seriously, I, I, I sat and I thought, who is Wayne? What does he mean to me? Uh, and that came out. And so what are your thoughts on me sharing that with you? And hopefully that makes you feel good knowing that that's the influence that you have on so many thousands of people uh, in, in California, probably all over the country. You know what? Um, that means a lot to me, Jeff, and I appreciate you. And I feel the same about you every time we get together. Actually, from day one, when we met many years ago. I automatically knew that you were a special person. Um, you, you know, you're silly like I am, but you, you are, you're also a deep thinker and you're intelligent and we have a lot in common. And, and that's what um, that's what made me know that that you were going to be my brother for many years. Um, it was it was a no brainer. Um, you're easy to, to like and to love. So so I feel the same way about you, man. Um, and uh, let's go back to the Maya Angelou uh, quote. That's brilliant because laughter is so important. And you know me and dude, I'm so silly and I'm so jovial and I laugh every single day. Um, and it's either it's statements say that the people that laugh a lot and joke a lot and have fun, they live longer. And I, and I totally believe that because um, anger and stress and, and all, those emotions will, will wear you out and, and take a lot out of you. And life is too short. And we're starting to see that with this COVID and, and I mean, people are just, just dropping left and right. So, you know, I, I just I always advise people, you know what, be optimistic, try to find the good in, in things instead of the bad and just be happy and laugh and have fun. Yeah, no, I, uh, I love that about you. And uh, you're just so deep and wear so many hats. And normally I don't do this, but I, I got another thought of the day that I just had to put in when I was trying to prep for this show a little bit. Uh, I was like, man, and we're going to get into who you are shortly, but I got mm -hmm. another thought and, and it uses a strong word. And I'm really curious to see what you think about that. Um, but it's by Shanti Deva, and, and he was an eighth century Buddhist monk. And he wrote a yeah. beautiful poem. And I actually created uh, and took some of his words and created what I call this healing board that I use for my C4 stuff. But here's what I have on the outside of that board that led me to think about you. And, and it says, may I be a healing medicine for myself and for all who are broken. Yes, beautiful. And I want you to, to digest that for a second. And then I want to share this other quick thought because broken, sometimes people, that's just definitely a strong word. And I don't throw that around lightly, but there's this other piece that goes with this exercise that I do. Um, and it's a Japanese word and it's kintsugi and okay. it's the art of being broken. And it's, they've been practicing this art form for centuries where they take a beautiful artifact uh, like a vase, intentionally break it, uh, clean it up, uh, get out all the shards, put some lacquer, uh, and then some 24 karat gold on that bad boy. Uh, uh -huh. It is the most beautiful artifact that you have ever seen. And so I see that again in you. 
um, by going around and the greatness that you have of being a healer. So I would just love to hear your thoughts and uh, on, on those two kind of deep thoughts. Well, that's another one. Um, I mean, you, you're hitting the nail on the head. That That is me. Um, I'm constantly um, healing myself and I'm constantly every day trying to heal other people that are broken and have been broken. And we've all been broken in life. That's just what life is. Life is not going to be everything that you want it to be. You're going to have some bumps and bruises. Being broken actually is a powerful thing. And it's a good thing because Let's take the aspect of, of a muscle. When you want to build a muscle to become stronger, you have to break it down. And as it heals, it becomes bigger and stronger. And that's the way I look at life. I mean, being broken is okay. It's just, it's how you heal. And if you want to heal. Um, um, so when you're broken, like you're talking about the, 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 when they break the vase or break, a, a break something and put it back together with gold, they broke it down, but then they put it back together and made it more beautiful. And it might not be as strong when it comes to objects, but I feel that in the human being aspect of it, we become stronger after we become broken and we start healing. So uh, being broken is wonderful. You hear people all, all the time use it as a derogatory thing. Oh, I'm, I'm a broken person or I'm a broken spirit. Well, if you stay broken, then that's when there's a problem. When you try to heal, the, the, the brokenness or whatever's broken in your life, that's when you become a stronger person and, and you learn from your mistakes and hopefully it doesn't happen again. And then you could take that knowledge and you share it with other people and, and, and help those people that are broken. And, and that's what's going on with a lot of people that's, that's suffering from mental illnesses. A lot of people that are suffering from mental illnesses or think they're suffering from mental illnesses, it's, it's, they just don't know how to heal or they don't have that person that they can talk to and share how they feel, or they hold things in, especially being, especially men. Um, you know, we're, we were reared not to show weakness and cry and be soft and hug and say, I love you. But I think that's one of the biggest um, mistakes that a father can make is to teach his son, don't ever be weak and don't ever show weakness and don't ever cry because then you're holding stuff in and then you're taking that, that, and you're walking around with that burden and that stress on you. And that, that's a killer. You know what I mean? So, so being broken is okay. It's just how you heal. Yes. Yes. And um, you talk about being a dad and I know you wear so many different hats. And I think that's another reason why I was just attracted to you. One, you just make me feel good every time your energy is just off the chart. Um, Thank you. But uh, the depth of, of who you are uh, is uh, just inspiring. You know, and, and I met you when when you and I were working at UC Davis, um, yeah. helping heal people as a team, uh, yes. uh, taking people that are trying to die on us and, and, and say, uh, uh, you know, not today. And then just bringing value to what we did to make things better. Uh, and that was way back, probably in the in the 90s, uh, yeah. 90s. I know you're a musician, uh, a mm -hmm. producer. Uh, I know you're from uh, D-Town, which is Detroit. I <laughs> uh, don't know if you're a Bad Boys fan uh, or not, but we can get into that uh, in a second. Definitely a, a Sacramento legend uh, on 102.5 and uh, made my day of just listening in to you. And, and again, your laugh, we definitely got to get into that because I want people to hear how that comes from your right big toe and <laughs> all the way out. Uh, it just uh, makes people feel so good. Uh, I know uh, you have a daughter uh, who uh, definitely wants you to, to talk about and, and your role there. Uh, I guess my, my challenge is, is where do I start? Because you, you, I, I got reunited with you uh, back at Sac City. Uh, yeah. And I'm in there trying to figure out how to be a, a, a nursing professor. And here comes Wayne Wayne walking in, uh, getting ready to graduate and and do some big things as an occupational therapist. And I yeah. see you in your scrubs and I know you're getting ready to go make somebody's day uh, right now. But who are you? Oh, my gosh, that is, is tough. You know what, Jeff and Mike, I'm I'm first of all, I'm a guy who is extremely blessed um, to have God in my life. Um, and I have a family that instilled those qualities 
in my life. Um, I was born uh, in Detroit, Michigan, raised a uh, child prodigy. Um, I was blessed with a, a genius level IQ. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, uh, I play the cello. I, 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 I'm a producer, a writer. I have so many, I've been blessed with so many gifts. It was actually hard to figure out what I wanted to be in life and what I wanted to do. Um, and then I just came to the conclusion, why do I have to master one thing? I think that's the problem in, in society when it comes to academics and scholastics is they want you to master a subject. And then you take that subject and you go get a job with it. And, I, and I, I, that doesn't sit well with me because there's so many different things in life than mastering biology or medicine or computers or there's just so many aspects. So what I did was um, I just started going to school and getting a whole bunch of degrees and mastering stuff that I wanted to, to, to learn about. And, and it's worked out well for me. And I'm glad I did that because I don't want to be a one trick pony. Um, I feel that, you know, when you have these gifts and you don't use them, God will take them away. And I don't want him to take any of my gifts away from me. So I use them all. So um, so I did radio, TV. Um, I dropped out of nursing school to get into radio and TV. Um, that's a whole nother story. Um, and I did that for 13, 14 years of radio and TV. And then I decided after I retired from radio in 2016 that I wanted to go back to my roots of wanting to help people. Um, and that's what I did. I was going to go back into nursing. And then I did a little bit of, you know, um, research, looking at different different areas of, of medicine and, and, um, and I found out I've, I found occupational therapy and I started really looking into that and I was like wow this is deep and in retrospect you know we do a lot of things that nurses do nurses to me are the freaking heroes of, of the, the the workforce when it comes to medicine I mean everybody talks about doctors 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 are wonderful also but when I started working at UC Davis and seeing who was really in there on the front line doing the, the footwork and, and in there in the, in the dirt and in trenches with these patients, it's the nurses, man. I mean, they're amazing people. And I think that they don't get enough um, just dues. But then I looked in the occupational therapy and, it, it, you know, even though we all coincide, everything coincides with each other, how we treat patients and, and, and get patients back to where they need to be. Um, Occupational therapy is is just a different ball game because you're you're treating a person's physical and their mental, and that's what I'm all about. You know what I mean? That's a lot of people don't understand that healing. A lot of it is mental. A lot of a lot of people, when they're healing from from a catastrophic event or you know being uh, getting amputated or or having a stroke, the the rehab process is very mental. Um, and then the physical aspect kicks in. So that's what made me fall in love with occupational therapy. And um, I, I, I mean, after graduating and, and working in the field, man, I mean, even when I was doing my clinicals, um, I knew that this was something that I absolutely love and I, and I love it. I love it. I love my patients. My patients love me. And it's just a wonderful thing. Yeah. No, just knowing the the field of, of that you're talking about and, just makes me feel good uh, being a nurse and being at the bedside with you and knowing now your role that you get to go into people's homes and, yeah. and when they're struggling and they're having these challenges and then to have someone like you be able to walk in that door uh, with that big, beautiful smile with yeah. all your gifts and the knowledge. Um, yeah. Just makes me feel good. Just makes me feel yeah. good. And uh, speaking of feeling good and speaking of gifts, I know Mike has been chomping at the bit. He loves music uh, like you. And I know he wants to talk to you a little bit about some music. Actually, uh, Wayne, we're still working all this out. I've been trying to jump in for like about 20 minutes now. <laughs> and my posture just, he, he doesn't recognize. We've been working on signals. And he's obviously looking at you and not at me at all. So he's killing me right now. But, uh, uh, Wait, I just got to say, uh, earlier, uh, Jeff said how he has a face for radio. 
So I'm here because I'm the eye candy. So you realize what kind of trouble we're in. Look at this. <laughs> but before we get into musical, I had one question and um, what you're doing is incredible. But we're talking about someone being broken and you come up to someone being broken. Is there like a first line or something you tell them right off the bat that's going to give them hope, some inspiration? Do you have a go to line or is it you just look at someone, hear their story for a minute and then do you just come up with something on the fly? Well, first of all, it's, it's all about um, listening. And, um, you know, every time we greet somebody or meet somebody, it's just the normal thing to say, hey, how are you doing? But a lot of, it's, it's like propaganda. I mean, a lot of people don't really care about how you're doing. If you really start breaking down how you're doing when someone asks you, they'll probably look at you like you're crazy. Like, okay, I, I didn't want to know all that or that's too much or woo woo. When I ask someone how they're doing, um, I really mean, how are you doing? I'm take, I'm, I will take out the time and I'm going to listen to you. And, and, and if you listen to what people are going through or there's some verbal cues or there's, there's physical cues that you see, you could tell when someone wants to open up and they want to tell you how they feel. Um, some people are downtrodden. Some people, it's in their body language. Um, Every time, every time I see a patient, the first thing I ask them is how they're doing. And, and I actually document it in my notes and you know, when I chart um, their response because a lot of people will tell you how they're doing, especially when they're in a down point in their lives. Um, when they start telling me that, I ask them, do you want to talk about it? You know, and then from that point on, they, that usually opens up the floodgates and, and I'm, I'm there. No matter what I'm what I have to do, I will put something on hold and I will talk to someone because you never know when that you're the last person that you're the last person that that person could be reaching out to. That could be the last, you could be the last person to talk to before that person com thinks about committing suicide or doing something, robbing a bank or something. You never know what people are thinking inside emotionally. So um, that's what I usually do. And then if they're telling me, you know, they're having problems at home or they're, yeah, they're upset because they're unemployed or the pandemic, whatever the case may be, we sit down and we have a powwow and it could be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours. I will sit there the whole time. Well, that's, that's great, outstanding. And now I got another question for you. If there was a song, we're going to music now. Uh -oh. If there was a song that kind of embodies your life or what you do, do you have a song in mind that gets you there? Oh, that is a very good question. Gee whiz. Because you're talking to someone who listens to all genres and love all genres of music. And my music catalog database in my brain is so extensive. Um, I'm going to have to come back to that. Because that's a very time. I'm going to interrupt you real quick because I've been okay. thinking about this one too. And just for right now, for me, so don't even listen, you start thinking about because I know you got way too much in your brain. Yeah. Hey, yeah. For me, I'm going to have to go Stevie Wonder right now. Isn't she lovely? Oh, and, that, and uh, you know, my baby girls, and they're getting old now and they're 22 and 24. <laughs> and uh, Aaliyah and both Capriana, yeah, both of them right now. Uh, yeah, my heart's just full of love and joy because they're both at home, uh, which is unexpected. You know, I, Capriana graduated and is working as a nurse now. Uh, and then nice. stuff, she ended up coming home. And then Aaliyah should be at Sonoma State finishing up. Uh, and she's at home doing things online. And so to have this time uh, where I didn't expect it. Um, yeah, when I, well, when Delia gave birth to my girls, yeah, that song was definitely one of someone would have asked me that 22, 24 years ago would have been right there. And I would have never thought I would revisit that. But this time has been a gift uh, from that point of view of giving me more time with my girls. Uh, and so, yeah, Stevie uh, and that song just kind of takes oh. me home and it, it is where I am. Yeah, that's, that's a beast. That song right there. I mean, and that's Stevie, though. It seems like everything that Stevie, everything he does, like, really just grabs your heart and just, like, just twist it because it's so, he's such a great writer. And But when you have a, a baby girl like myself and, and, and you, uh, Mike, do you have kids? 
Whatever. Yeah, I have uh, four kids, three boys and a daughter. So we all know what it's like to have a daughter and what yeah. a daughter does to you as far as what, what she does to your heart. I mean, boys are wonderful, but a daddy and a daughter's love is just, it's a whole nother ball game. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, isn't she lovely by by Stevie? Is butterfly kisses is mine for my daughter. Mm. That song is is every time I hear that song, I just I just break down inside because it's beautiful. It's a it's a beautiful song. So what about you, Mike? What about you for your daughter? Oh man, for my daughter, yeah. No, I'm with you about that. Something about you know having a daughter. You're from day one. You're just done. And I know uh, my posh is the same way, Wayne, you, same thing with you. Uh, with boys, it's a little different because you kind of, you know, you know what they're going through. You know what they're experiencing. You try to help them out. But I always recall when my daughter was young once and uh, and I never claimed to to figure out women. I still haven't. But one day, <laughs> she, yeah, one day she was in a room crying. I was like, oh, honey, oh, I'm so sorry. What's going on? You know, what's the matter? I'm trying to help out. And she's all, I, I, I. I, I just have a lot of emotions <laughs> and I was like, okay. So then I, when I got my wife, I go, I think you know this better than me, but yeah, <laughs> something about, you know, something about, it's just different. It seems like emotionally you can get a little bit closer because, um, because she's willing to express more emotion towards you than the boys are. And that's right. just from, that's just from day one. I don't know if they're taught that or if they see that on TV or from me, I'm not sure. But it's just interesting. They just, they just seem like they're wired a little differently that way. Very much so, yeah. Women are very, very special creatures. And, and I'll tell someone in a second, man, um, this world cannot run without women because they are wired differently. Um, they're nurturers. They're emotional. They love. They're caring. And, and I just I absolutely love the the contrast of man and woman because you got to have you got to have a woman to keep a man in line more than you have to have a man to keep a woman in line in my opinion i mean a, a woman can absolutely a woman can survive by herself in my opinion a lot easier than a man can can, can survive by himself in my opinion they're very self-sufficient very emotional creatures they're very they're brilliant they see things that we we don't see when they start talking about a woman's premonition and intuition that stuff is real. It's so real. <laughs> well, definitely. Yeah. You no, know, I feel the exact same way, <laughs> uh, especially being in a female dominated profession, uh, especially yeah. starting, you know, I was one of the first male nurses, you know, uh, yeah. before it became something to do. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, no, I, I agree uh, so much and, and definitely going to be a highlight of this show is taking all the expertise that women bring and the balance and leadership uh, and helping uh, us figure out life and sharing it uh, with the opposite sex. And so, yeah, I agree a hundred percent, but I do want to get into uh, one amazing woman with you and, and that's your daughter. Uh, I got to get an update, man. I know she's uh, working as a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, she's amazing, man. Um, I had my daughter when I was in high school um, and uh, I had a girl and I told God, okay, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me back for all the women that I've had. So I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what, man? Every, every, every man that I know that was a ladies man has a whole bunch of girls. And I already knew, like mm. I said, I'm going to have a girl, me and my buddy, Jason, we both had our, um, it was me and my buddy, Jason and my buddy, Alaric. We all got our girlfriends pregnant in high school at the same time. Me and Jason were like the biggest players on the planet. And Alaric was a good guy. And from the gate, I said, Jason, we're going to have girls. And Alaric, you're going to have a boy. And that's exactly what happened. I quit. I quit. I was like, no, I'm not having, no, I'm not going to have a whole bunch of girls. Jason kept having babies and he has like five girls. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so yeah, I had my daughter and it was like, okay, this is enough. And um, just, and, and just, she, just a, a blessing, man. Just a pure blessing. Um, have she's been always been a special, brilliant girl. Um, high IQ, straight A student most of her life. She went through high school straight A's all the way through. Went to UC Davis. Graduated from UC Davis. Um, then she went to. Oh gosh, I can't call, recall the graduate school she went to. 
But anyway, make a long story short, she's a doctor of psychology. She just texted me the other day and uh, she's working two or three jobs. She's just like her daddy, crazy. And she got a job offer for a clinical director just a couple of days ago. So she's, yeah, yeah, she's 29 years old. Yeah. That's crazy. Congratulations. Uh, Cause I know how hard you work for all that. And that's a, another area that we uh, have a lot of uh, commonalities of usually you're doing multiple jobs. And I, don't, I never even knew how you did it. Cause I know you, <laughs> you were working nights together at UC Davis, which were long shifts and some hard work. Uh, and then I know you would get up and go do your radio stuff or actually not even get up, not even go to sleep. Right. Stay up. <laughs> and I don't even know uh, yeah, how you did it. And then you'd probably sleep a few hours and you'd be back at work at UC Davis and um, always uh, never once looked tired, acted tired, always brought your, your crazy energy and your <laughs> smile and your big heart. And I guess that's where I would like to take it. Um, as I'm just putting these thoughts together is how do you do that? And I really want you to get into, because that's a skill set, you know, and, and I know you and, and people aren't going to believe this because they see your beautiful personality uh, through this show, but I know you like to keep things close to home. Uh, and, and if uh, you had your choice of going to a party uh, or chilling on, on your couch by yourself, you're chilling on the couch. Yeah. So how do you, do all these things and bring this great energy. Do you have a routine? Uh, I know you're a believer and your dad's a pastor and I, and I know that's a big part of your life. Um, but yeah, if you can share uh, with the listeners of if they're struggling with uh, figuring out how to bring their best self, um, you know, what would Wayne and Wayne tell them? Well, first of all, uh, first and foremost, like you said, I am a believer. So and I give everything to the man upstairs. Um, I pray um, without ceasing day and night. And, and, and I ask him for strength and wisdom and guidance. And I believe that he's going to give it to me. And he does. And, and that's, that's my main go-to. Um, you have to look at the bigger picture when you're going through life. What you, wanna, what you want to accomplish. You have to understand, like I said before, life is short. So if you go through life and take it for granted and don't push yourself, you're not going to get to where you want to be. Um, a, psychological, a, a, fact, a psychological fact, every person, when they get to a certain age, usually in their elderly years, they sit down and they reflect on how they spent their time and what they did in their lives. And a lot of elderly people go into depression thinking about what they didn't do and what they could have done. I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to have the latter part of my years second guessing what if I would have done this and what it could have should have. I'm going to do and try everything that I put my mind to. And that's what type of person I am. And if I have to beat myself up a little bit and lose a little bit of sleep to do it, um, I'm going to do it. And, you know, your human body is amazing and the mind is amazing because it doesn't need a lot of sleep. You don't have to have eight hours of sleep to, to be able to function. And, and I realized that, and, and I've done it on three hours of sleep, four hours of sleep um, for 13, 14, 15 years straight and succeeded. You know, I would work all night at UC Davis, go straight to the radio station and that microphone turned on and you had no idea that I'd been up for 12 hours prior. You know what I mean? Um, you just have to know your body and you have to push yourself a little bit to find out what your body and what your mind can do. Your body will tell you, your body talks to you. If you listen, if, if you go through life and you're very cognizant of, of how you feel physically and mentally, your body tells you when it's too much. Um, and, and that's what I do. I just listen, listen to my body. And, and after a while, um, sleeping three or four hours a day was, was okay. That's all I needed. Uh, same now I work on out at UC Davis. And then, you know, I, I, prepare for my patients and go right to them and, and treat them every day. You know what I mean? And then I catch up on sleep on, on my weekends, on my days off or whatever the case may be. And I eat right. Um, I put the right things in my body. I take vitamins and, and then I just, I just, and I laugh. And like I said, and, and I'm, and I'm happy. And all that, 
all that together, man, I mean, I think all of those things together, that's, those are my essential ingredients right there. Man. Yeah. It's almost a, a great spot to, to stop the show, especially with you giving a little plug for the essential ingredients, <laughs> which, which was amazing. But I, I, I do got to just ask at least one more and then we got to let you get going um, because I want to tap into your expertise and hopefully I can be articulate with the question, um, your expertise of music, you know, and I think as we're trying to come up with our essential ingredients uh, for our life song, um, as you as a producer, and I don't know anything about music, um, uh, I wish I, I, I knew a little bit, but I know that there's layers and I know, you know, C4 uh, leaders is, is about uh, building chemistry, you know, one of our C's is helping people find, you know, their role, uh, developing trust in themselves uh, to bring and receive value. And I think when you start looking at producing music, I don't know why I just see an association of these different layers of music, different roles that people can have in their life. And then you have different instruments and, and just putting them all together to create something so beautiful. Um, regardless of the genre of music, but just all that together is just so inspiring. And I don't know if you can make, I'm probably not even asking a, a question, um, but I don't know if you can make sense of what I'm trying to process uh, with these just layers and how uh, you put something together where it just sounds right. And then it's just a beautiful product at the end that can inspire lives. You know, it's, it's an amazing, creating is amazing. Um, whether it's, um, a song or a book or writing a script for a movie to start off with nothing and building something to where at the end you're like this is amazing this is beautiful this is the song or the story there's nothing like it and that's what I think um, when you sit in front of a uh, when I sit in front of a canvas a blank canvas and I have my paint and pencil and pen and I start drawing and I start painting just knowing at the end that it's going to be something great. The anticipation is, is amazing. It's the same thing with producing music. You're sitting there, you don't have anything. You have the metronome, you know, tick, 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 tick for timing. And then you add a hi-hat. And then you build around the hi-hat and the bass line and the, and the snare drum and, and everything that you, and then you add the piano and the, the trumpet or whatever the case may be. And, and why you creating that, it's, there's nothing, I can't even describe um, the feeling and, uh, and, and that you're getting when, you, when that's all coming apart, I mean, coming together um, and you're hearing things and things are coming this way and you're like, okay, no, this, there's a tambourine should be here. And then it's just, it's just coming together and it's like things are being thrown at you mentally and then you're picking out what you want to put into the song. And then at the end of the song, when you, when you write the song, when you write the lyrics to the song and you have a singer come in and you sing the song, then you're doing the backgrounds and you're doing the harmonies. And then when it's all said and done and it's all done and you're sitting in the studio and you're mixing it, Jeff, it's, it's the most amazing thing ever, ever. I mean, I can't even describe it. And it's just like, I write movies and scripts. We did our movie uh, Left and Loosen a lot. We wrote that, me and Don Deus, uh, uh, Demetrius, and we wrote that and directed and produced that. It's, just, it's, it's the same thing. When people And then when people are listening to it and you're watching them bob their head and singing it and appreciating the work that you put in, it's, it's, it's almost like, I'll put a smaller scale. When you cook for someone and you have them come over for a meal and, they're, and they bite into it and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. It's that same pride that you feel, but on a larger scale. What a beautiful picture uh, you painted. And uh, I know you got to go. It's uh, it's after 10. And uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and sharing your life's essential ingredients. Can't thank you enough for all that you're doing for your patients or clients. I don't know what you call them. Can't thank you enough for putting all your effort and your love into raising your baby girl who is no longer a baby girl and is doing great uh -huh. things to help so many people. Uh, can't thank you enough for everything you continue to do at UC Davis Medical Center, uh, knowing you. the challenges that 
the nurses and doctors uh, are dealing with over there. But knowing that you're there to inspire uh, and, and help their heart uh, stay full uh, and, and their belly full with uh, uh, your laughter. Um, this, this show ended up getting a, a little serious, so we didn't even get to hear like the, <laughs> just the depth of that, but definitely can see it through your smile. And uh, we wish you the best. And Pasha, you got any closing comments for Wayne and Wayne? Yeah, Wayne, thank you. That was great. Appreciate it. Um, hopefully one day I look forward to meeting you in person and we can have a cold one or a cup of coffee. We'll go discuss some 80s basketball because, you know, Jeff was a big uh, Boston fan. I was a big L.A. fan. You're Detroit. <laughs> so I know Jeff had Larry Bird. I had Magic Johnson. You had, I think, with John Sally. So it'd be fun to just <laughs> hash that out. <laughs> Appreciate it, Wayne. Nice meeting you. Oh. Out of everybody, he named John Sally. <laughs> yeah, he was good. I thought I was going to at least give you Isaiah. Yeah, you could have you could have named Bill Lambeard Isaiah. You're going to give me John Sally, but I'll take it. Uh, Rodman, but I'll take it. No, man, you, what you guys are you guys are wonderful, and thanks for having me on. Um, real quick, back to the, the song that you wanted to hear. Um, there's a song called uh, "I Need You Now" by Smokey Norfolk. Mm. Write that down. "I Need You Now" by Smokey Norfolk. My big brother, Derek Allen, actually produced it. Um, he's out of Sacramento. I want you guys to listen to that song. It's the most beautiful song. It's a very spiritual song. Check that out. That's that's the song that I'm going to pick, Mike. That's the one. Um, I want to just say that for, before we close out um, to everyone, we're dealing with these trying times with COVID. Um, and I ask people to, to stay positive and be smart and be safe. Um, stop going on YouTube looking for conspiracy theories on why this is not a real virus. Um, don't do that. Do If you're going to waste your time or spend time doing research, do research on how this is real and what you can do to prevent you and your loved ones from getting the, the virus. It's very real. Um, I, got, uh, I got the vaccine a few days ago. Um, I go back and get my second one June, January 12th. Um, th there was no side effects. I feel wonderful. Um, there's a little, I'm a little, you know, tender where they, where the needle went in, but that's normal for a shot, but get your shot when it's available to the public, get the shot. Don't worry about, you know, you know, the outcome of what COVID could, could bring is death. Um, I'm pretty sure nobody's going to die from this vaccine. Um, nobody has yet. And, and a lot of people are taking it. So take this serious, um, be safe. It's not about just you. It's about people around you. And that's the main reason that I got the, the vaccine because heaven forbid any of my patients get sick and die because I was, I gave them COVID. So it, it's deeper than just how you feel and, and, and your body. Think about people around you with comorbidities and other illnesses that can die from this, from this. So take it seriously. I love you guys. Have a wonderful holiday, uh, Christmas, New Year's. And yes, Mike, we can have beers, coffee. I prefer beers, whiskey, all that. <laughs> all right, here, here's what we're going to do. Wayne, you and I have been talking Reno forever. Uh, and it's a whole nother show. But my yeah. show loves to play some cards. Oh, yeah. Cards. Uh, and I know you love Reno. So once the COVID quiets down, that's what we're going to do. We road tripping it, going to Reno. Uh, have a good time. Just get to sit and uh, experience each other uh, in the best possible way with lots of laughter and some good conversation. Wayne, we thank you. Appreciate you. Love you. Uh, stay safe. Appreciate the comments on the COVID and and letting people know since you're on the front lines that, uh, yeah, it, it's for real. Um, and, and you stay safe. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Love you guys. You too. Thank you. Bye. Take it easy. Right. And that's it. Life's Essential Ingredients with Wayne and Wayne. Take care.